So we're lucky today because uh, joining me and Travis as Travis Carlton, I'm Rufus Philpott. There's a great drummer friend, Steve Haas, and it's I met Steve here. in New York City, right? Right, New York City. Uh, many years ago. So uh, we're just going to talk about some stuff and play a few tunes for you as well. <laughs> play with uh, Scott Henderson and oh, yeah. I mean Scott's in his mid 50s and Scott's Sounds been great as ever playing since the 80s yeah. like with Chick and all that and it's ferocious, man, ferocious. right incredible yeah. playing it's just it's great to hear that kind of just <laughs> unbelievable level of intensity across anything from Wayne Shaw to Ballad yeah to a blues in E and it's all Scott Henderson <laughs> See, because sometimes I almost find I would rather fly to the gig, not sleep, and go straight to the gig and have that adrenaline. You know, right. you just, you know what I mean? Yeah. I think some of the best shows have come out of jet lag yeah. and just not even, I mean, you have to know the material. Right. I'll say that same thing, like if right. it's a gig you've done and you're comfortable on. You know, if it's a new gig, I will probably split that in half, probably sleep for an hour. And, then and you'll an shed and, before and hitting the lobby. And yeah. maybe just make sure my, my limbs are warmed up. Right. You know. Um, if I know the gig inside out, then I'll sleep. Right. <laughs> What's the fat? Well, I'm running, it's, it's my Mooger Fugger. Ah. It's the Mooger Fugger, but I'm running it through the X Blender. Right. Because if I, if I turn off this, that's without the X Blender. So you get a little volume loss. So you get all the... So I add a little subs that's to That's pretty it. massive. Yeah. I love that. The bass I'm playing right now, I actually stole from Travis. There you go. <laughs> True story. You really like maple fingerboards, right, yeah, Travis? Yeah, yeah. I, I kind of tend towards ash maple. And I love the rosewood board, you know. Oh. So Travis was like, well, you know what, man? You know, I think you should have this bass. So I should have Travis to thank for this instrument. It's the best combination of <clears throat> being kind of a vintage, worn-in thing, but having all the modern stuff. So for me, it's like the first bass, I can honestly say, that has kind of a cool combination of both. So that's, that's kind of why I'm digging it. Good point about these, about these instruments, which is something that I, I know you dig about them, and I've just started using this one on the road, is 
the fact that if you've got a bass with a good EQ on it, yeah. if the amp is heinous, you at least it have got this, helps a lot this, to have that much right? control. I Man, really, like, I, I can say with the exotic basses, I've, I've had to deal with my setup less. Like, I don't even think about it. Like, if I were to switch again, I would be shocked, I think, at, right. at how much I had to set up my bass, like, how often. Yeah, that's to totally do that. true. But, I mean, I hardly ever. It's like every once in a while, intonation. Right. And it's just being able to keep your volume and intensity up when you switch to the back pickup. Like, right. That's that's one of the things that's kept me so loyal to Exotic, and that is that I feel like when I do go, because I guess most of my back pickup stuff is a lot of when I solo. Right, and, RC Booster. And this is like my favorite secret weapon pedal. Like for passive basses, I just have this with a little bit of juice dialed in on the bass end and a little extra volume and that just fattens the jazz bass up. So mm -hmm. if I do have to take a passive bass on the road, <coughs> that little that pedal is it's a lifesaver and in the studio too. So that's kind of a, a cool kind of thing. Man, I mean, even on like, you know, my vintage, I have a 63 jazz bass, and if I take it on a gig and I go to solo on that, I find myself going, shit, I should have brought the RC right. booster. Right, exactly, right. <laughs> because, yeah. well, just, I mean, the minute, although the back pickup sounds beautiful, if I don't have my amp set up to be Jocko all night, like instantly the ass end drops out, and I'm right. all little and trying to like, now it's your time to play a melody, but you can't really get above everybody yeah. else. Yeah, yeah. And that's, that's one of the beautiful things about these axes is the control is is big, you know? Yeah. Like the, the amount of control sonically you have just right at your fingertips without ever having to reach to the amp is, is pretty massive. My website is www.stevehasshass.net. Uh, please pay me a visit. Um, I got a website too, and um, something I've been doing recently is quite a lot of uh, lessons via Skype too. So if uh, any of you guys out there are interested in doing some studying with me, um, you can hit me up. Uh, my email is rufusbase, R-U-F-U-S-B-A-S-S, at gmail.com, rufusbase at gmail. Um, you can also go and hear some music at rufusphilpot.com. Uh, which has, uh, there's a Captain Kirk Trio CD up there and a few other things, and I also have an instructional DVD you can email me about as a download. Uh, and come and see us play. We're all playing uh, in the LA area and across the states and somewhere around the world. Yes. Um, one of the places we play a lot is the Baked Potato. I'm playing there at the end of the month uh, with Scott Henderson, and Travis will be playing around town as well this month, So and Steve too, so please keep an eye out for all of us. And thanks for joining us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> A little stony jam. <laughs>